do a sound check here and it looks like you can hear me I hope that is true those that have watched previous sessions remembers my faux pas with uh, being on mute for about five minutes so now I'm super uh, paranoid about that but I think that we are good do one more thing here. You know, I always gotta get my stuff situated. So let's do this and put this here. All right. I guess that'll. I guess that'll work. As good as it gets. for the confirmation that you can hear me. I really appreciate that. I think we're ready for Coffee with the Cowbell. And I am so glad that uh, you're able to join either live or on demand. I was joking with someone just the other day. They were asking me about this and I was like, yep, I like to wake up on a Saturday morning with a cup of coffee just to talk about teams. I'm that kind of a geek. So cheers. Hopefully you got coffee too. We're all in our pajamas or whatever. Uh, just geeking out on teams. If you are joining live, I'm going to try my best to monitor chat. Um, still getting the hang of this multi-streaming stuff as you probably saw prior. I am streaming four places simultaneously right now trying to take a peek at what's going on on each I think I'm successfully streaming but I'm hoping my tools here let me uh, monitor the uh, chat appropriately so we'll see we'll see how that goes um, so um, if you are out there and you want to put something in the chat I'm happy to talk about anything but, um, you know, I just tend to fire up my demos and just start geeking out on some teams topics. Um, one of the things I thought was funny from yesterday, and I'm going to go over to one of my demo tenants here, is uh, <clears throat> fire up teams here. We were talking about the who bot where you can um, actually I'll just show it up in the box slash who and it and if you know you're using teams in your organization can do something like uh, saying who is you know Bob let's say and who in my org found two Bob's one of which is Bob Wiley and so then clicking on that brings up their um, their profile card and you know in my demo tenant there's not a lot of organizational stuff managers and all that good stuff but in your org doing this would probably bring you know would bring up a nice hierarchy of the um, company org you know who they report to who they manage all that good stuff but I just thought it was funny uh, I'm not sure if everybody is uh, considers what about Bob as beloved a movie as I do so uh, that's what this whole Bob Wiley thing is from. He, uh, no spoilers, even though the movie's like 20 years old, but you know, he, he, he writes a book at the end of the uh, movie called Death Therapy. And so that's what this is about. So I just thought it was funny. Uh, uh, yesterday, I think some folks didn't, didn't necessarily catch on to that. So I'm not sure how popular it is, but I love that movie. What about Bob? You should check it out. Anyway, but, uh, but I use that to, to show this who feature in case uh, it's not uh, you know, known that it's there. And I notice a couple things. So I, I did access it from the search box. Uh, it's, it's essentially a bot. You can see here 
Um, and so it's got its own kind of dedicated window for the chat experience between the bot. So, so my clicks are essentially button press or not button press. All right, my clicks are queries. You know, I, I, um, I clicked on Bob here. It's essentially did a chat to the bot saying, who is Bob, you know, full, full, um, email there. So I'm talking with the, with the bot, um, through these clicks. You could probably also notice on the left side, um, the who, you know, left rail button is a, appeared there. I could uh, pin that if I if I do who if I do who searches a lot. The more I say that, the more it feels like a Dr. Seuss book. Anyway, <laughs> I can do who searches um, if I do them a lot. Maybe I would pin them to the left rail. <laughs> And um, and uh, and if I go into chat uh, chat here, you can see my my conversation with the who bot is uh, here as well, All right? Um, so I call those things out for a couple reasons. One, you know, just like from a best practice perspective, uh, what what I'll, what I'll find is after I'm done with this, you know, I need to find the person I want to find, and I, I found them. I, got that done I mean this just like any other chat this will stay on my recents list uh, I don't know if you've seen my five tips what do I call them uh, changing lanes five tips for you know using chat and one of the tips was uh, keeping your chat history here clean there's no reason necessarily for that to just stay there forever so I can just hit hide I'm not deleting that chat or anything like that. It's just taking it out of the way. Um, I can do another who search and you know, I'm, uh, I don't think there's a Tom in New York. Uh, sorry, I couldn't understand your query. So it's trying and so forth. But yeah, the who, the who uh, chat comes back just like any other chat. So if I was to go through this, um, you know, maybe this one, right? Some old meeting I was in why let it take up space here on that so I just you know hit high if I do that enough I'm gonna clean up this this list to be just the most relevant chats for me so you know what teams are trying to do initially is just recent newest to oldest which is cool but I can clean that up a bit just by hiding it and so I just like to point out you know that that's I'm not deleting anything I'm really just hiding it out of you it will come back the moment that chat resurfaces the moment I do a search and find it again um, so hiding just helps keep things clean. So I've got chats down here that Teams is keeping automatically for me. And I've also got my pin chats, the ones I know I want to stay uh, in front of me as well. <clears throat> okay. Um, and and as I, and while I'm here, I'm kind of just thinking through some things uh, that have had you know that I've used Teams for even recently as this week. Uh, the other one you might not use often but that I used a couple times this week alone is for a particular person. Let's say this is, I'm gonna make this a little bigger here so that you could see that. Uh, and I gotta remember that my face is in the way sometimes. So, uh, but I think I'm good now. So Nestor here, um, I wanna talk to Nestor, but let's, or in this case, he's offline. I want to hit him up with a chat as soon as he gets online. Three dots here, notify when available. Okay, didn't do any, you don't see anything, but what that means is as soon as Nestor goes green, I'm gonna get a pop-up saying that. And I, I've, done, I've used that for a couple people just this week alone, right? I'm, I'm waiting. I don't wanna have to hit them up while they're red, while they're on a call. So I'm basically telling teams, hey, let me know as soon as they're green. They're, you know, and by when I see green, I'm assuming you're no meetings and you are open to be communicated with. You haven't put yourself on as busy. You're not on the call and so forth. So I want to be as respectful of that person's time and schedule. So I want to wait till they're green before I communicate with them. So that notify when available is telling teams, um, let me know when they're available and then of course when I'm done with that with, with my need to stalk them <laughs> then I can turn off the notification 
Um, but as long as I keep that on, what I'll keep seeing in the corner there is just a little pop up saying uh, Nestor is on online, and, and I think it even tells me when they go offline. So it it uh, yeah it just lets me know you know about that. So I think I have two or three people right now that I'm kind of stalking. Actually, I wouldn't say it that way. I just haven't uh, gone back and turned off the notification. So this week I've seen them pop up. I don't really need to to uh, reach them anymore, but I've just have been too lazy to turn the notification off. <laughs> so so there's that. But that I just thought of that as I was sitting here in the uh, in the chat area. Um, so that's that's a good one um, that you may not you know be aware of, <clears throat> and uh, it's also uh, relevant. It's also relevant these days, or maybe was even more relevant maybe a couple weeks ago when it comes to time off and you know holidays and whatnot. Um, to kind of you know be sensitive to people's presence or what you know what they've set themselves to and let me explain that so on on one side yes teams and outlook and office 365 in general is keeping track of your availability and changing things automatically so you're not manually changing yourself to busy uh, the system let's call it is knows that you're in a scheduled meeting so you're busy or if you're actually on a Teams call, it knows you're in a call, so it changes your presence to in a call. What we tend to do manually, though, is things like coming here, and and so this is the presence I'm talking about. We will come in here and say, do not disturb, for instance, if, um, if we really have that need. Uh, but the system will knows when I'm available, based on my calendar and or my activity in Teams, knows if I'm available if I'm busy it knows if I, it would also it's not in this list but it will show in a call it will show presenting um, and then these would be two others these yellows that I would um, do manually right um, I am either green either green or 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 in a call but I you know got to step away so be right back and then appear away um, you know just as it implies or appear offline um, and so uh, these these are useful uh, you may not have known about the in a call or in a in a, or presenting because those aren't shown here but those are those are really useful because when you see somebody and it's showing presenting you know not only are they in a call but they are probably actively talking you really don't want to try to chat with them right right then they are probably in a call presenting your screen and and talking to an audience you should really leave them alone for for the time being in a call I could be in a call but you know multitasking or not necessarily presenting so that's a little iffy I mean there's they're still currently blocked off for someone else you know uh, they're in a meeting you probably should leave them alone anyway but that's a little less uh, uh, bad you know hitting somebody up when they're presenting is is one probably going to be useless they're probably going to be focused on what they're doing but it's just not cool in my opinion if we're talking about teams etiquette um, but all that being said throughout my normal work day I might change these things uh, but you know based on what's going on but during holidays time off there's some other settings that I should uh, keep in mind and that hopefully you used if you took time off this past holiday season maybe you're still off which would be which is cool too <laughs> um, you're off and joined this webinar that's pretty cool anyway uh, so let's go into here go into settings um, and I believe let's see where is my, it's uh privacy so do not disturb um, well so that would be another presence that would come up I think that was actually in, in our list but again that's one that you could set here and but also manage a list of people let's say do not disturb except Nestor you know won't get that notification Esther's fine to talk to me whenever he wants so you can make a list of people like your manager spouse maybe I don't know um, that uh, kind of get through that 
that access. Um, teams will respect, you know, the out of office that you'll put on Outlook. And I don't think I got, I don't think I've got it ready to go in terms of a mobile, but I was going to show on mobile. You have things like, um, and I think I did this demo on a, some, in a previous video, things like um, your days that you want to kind of like not be available. So when I took a week off, I'm going to do Sunday through Saturday, basically, you know, block or uh, do not disturb. And it turns off notifications. So what that means to me is not only am I giving a message to all my colleagues that I'm out um, and it, it should be a pretty clear message. I'm out and would rather not be engaged. But it also, even if you do try to hit me up, I've turned off notifications. So my phone, which has Teams on it, is going to stay quiet in my pocket. No, no um, vibrations or anything like that. Um, so, so that's what I do when I really take it like at least a week off. I go in everywhere and start hitting the, the buttons to quiet everything um, so that it's clear from my presence that I'm unavailable but also even if you rudely try to ignore <laughs> all of my presence indicators I'm still not going to get it because I turned off all these notifications so um, so I'm, I guess I'm saying two things here one is use good etiquette and abide by you know uh, abide by people's uh, selections here but then also for your own self, managing your own self, uh, understand that you've got tools for turning off notifications and everything. In my consulting days, I've been plenty of places where I could tell the culture was one that ignored busy and ignored do not disturb. But uh, to me, that's not cool. But I know that that can be a reality. Some people just don't um, don't honor these uh, presence indicators. Um, but you can tell them the team where Cowbell said, listen to my presence. And if I'm on do not disturb, then don't disturb me. All right. I'll get off my soapbox on that one. But to me, again, that's a good one. And uh, and again, usually that is honored across the Office, 3, Office 365 ecosystem, I guess, wherever presence might be might be found so good deal um, not sure if I talked about this last time but the other thing as I was showing meetings uh, this the concept of recording the meeting came up uh, let me let me use my own tip here and hide this again keep get that out of my view um, so I record a little meeting here and a couple things about this I, I wanted to point out. So one, this meeting, and I didn't say anything or couldn't say anything because my demo environments don't have a mic and I need to fix that really if I really want to have better demos there. But in a, in, a, in a normal world, what this transcript for that recording would have shown is the, obviously the, what each person is saying with their the att the attribution next to it, Ricardo said X versus other people in a meeting. It's cool AI making that happen. So I'd get a transcript uh, that, that would be available right here in the meeting as its own tab, which is kind of cool, or available as a um, document. This is going to be a boring document because. Uh, should be nothing in it. Yeah, absolutely nothing. I didn't know if it had a title or something to it, but it would be a document that, that could be shared. We got we have we've had cool things coming out lately related to transcription and uh, captioning. There's probably four or five labels you can put on this concept of word said during a meeting right there's the automatic stuff that the AI is doing there is the ability to let manual captioning folks interact uh, all the stuff we so check that out you know online and see what we're doing with cart and transcription and captioning and language yeah, real-time language uh, 
translation, I should say. I'm speaking in English. It's in real time being shown in Spanish. That's a thing for teams as well. So cool stuff there. Maybe that's something I could demo in the future too, but I, I got to get my my uh, microphone and my demo environments working in order to do that. Uh, so yeah, the transcription is there, attendance report is there, which I guess in this case would just be two people. So there's giving me all the info about the meeting and then the two people, myself and Bob. Yep. And then there is uh, the, the recording itself which these days um, is going to be recorded in OneDrive. Now I'm glad I, I'm glad it worked the way I, it just did. I clicked it there, and it opened up. I don't know if you can tell that this is Bob's browser. I use Edge profiles, so I have a. I can open up Edge signed in as Ricardo, or open up Edge signed in as Bob, or other tenants or the other personas. So it opened up as Bob, and Bob is able to see this recording. Bob is able to see this recording because Bob was a attendee in the meeting and thus has permission to it. If anybody's been doing recordings, you know at first they were um, recorded in, in stream. They were organizational only, so you could have people outside of your organization in the meeting. They'd get a notification that the recording was available, but they wouldn't be able to see it the recordings are just for were just for the organization now with them being in OneDrive and OneDrive having these flexible sharing options now you've got some scenarios where you can share with others um, did I, what did I just hit um, I think this is, is this the right one I think I hit the back button let me do this one more time hit that there's that I think I meant to hit the share button yep so these flexible sharing options uh, here by default this recording only the people you specify have a link to this I can see down below where my head is let's, let's change this a little bit I can see down below the people that it's currently shared with Bob and myself but let's say I needed to share it with others I mean I've got the same options that you're hopefully used to sharing files in OneDrive and, and uh, SharePoint so uh, maybe there was um, I, I, maybe there's somebody that wasn't in the meeting that I want to share this with I'm, just, I'm ch clicking on specific people in this case I'll, cl I'll click on block download I want them to only watch it in the browser but not be able to get the mp4 for whatever reason um, so I'm gonna hit apply, and then I'll you know say you know Joe at Joe.com or whatever, right? Um, and hit send, and that's going to send it. It's gonna allow Joe after they authenticate themselves, you know, to to watch this video, which is just something you just uh, couldn't do when when those video, when those recordings were in stream. So um, so that's good stuff. Um, had I not hit the block download, and as as that implies, someone could be could come in and download their own copy of the meeting, which I'm sure has some value too. But uh, yeah, it has value too. So what, however you want to do it. So the meeting recording is kind of cool there. All right. So yeah, kind of just jumping around to stuff that kind of was relevant to me this week, as well as. Uh, from my uh, webinar session yesterday that would be at aka.ms slash cute for teams aka.ms slash cute for teams will take you here where you will uh, I haven't even posted it yet but it's on the YouTube playlist episode 42 so all that stuff is out there So, um, so yeah, so that that's some cool stuff there. Uh, the the last thing I'd say is uh, um, 
I also had some conversations about email versus chat this week, um, trying to show some of the value of, especially for your inner loop team, chatting in the team in the team's channel versus sending an email. And uh, let me see if I can pull that up real quick because I gave a few rules of thumb that you might find interesting. And I think I have it coming up here. Da, 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 da. Okay. Oops. Yep. Okay. So let me switch to that. That's not the one I was looking for. Let's go here. All right, hold on one sec. Let me try. Uh -huh -huh. Let me try. Okay, I almost got it here. I think it is this guy. There we go. I figured it out. All right. This was a little rules of thumb kind of thing that I was uh, talking about. When should my email be a chat? And the first one was, is your email to your team just a couple of sentences? If so, why make a nice, uh, why make a big formal email? That should be chat, just like text messaging, right? Or whether it's a few sentences or a lot of sentences, but do I expect a lot of back and forth after I post this in email? Do I want 10, 20 responses coming in email and you know, amongst all the rest of my email? Or do I, would I like that in a nice sequential thread in chat? So if you think there's gonna be some convo that, that this kicks off versus just one email where you're kind of just telling somebody something and then it goes away, it's gonna be convo back and forth. Let's put that in chat. Would it be helpful if the stuff that I'm about to say could be stumbled upon in the future? New team member comes on in six months. I'm new to the team. I wish I knew everything about Project X. I do a search and here's all, the full conversation of Project X showing up in Teams. How would they get that if you're, if that conversation was an email? Because right now that's in our the inboxes of the five people who talked about Project X six months ago. It's not somewhere that people can discover. Uh, so when we talk, when we had that conversation in chat, we're getting that benefit, right? And then also, uh, in general, will it spark some teamwork? Will uh, will a new document fire off as a result? You know that we'll collaborate on. Of course, my head is in the way again. Uh, things like that. Will it spark some teamwork? Uh, so those are kind of some rule, rules of thumb there. I was, you know, suggesting to consider the fact that email fatigue is real. We get a lot of email. If I can help take away some of that email from your inbox, I'm happy to do so. I have found that when conversations happen in Teams chat, sometimes people are a little more engaging. Because if you're like me, I would love to fire back and say, great idea, Sue. But I don't want to put another email into someone's inbox just for me to say great idea or a good job or something like that. If you put it in chat, I feel a lot better about adding my little three word message to that. And then um, and then I was also talking about how we can talk with our customers if they're federated correctly, um, you know, with chat as well. So I don't know, that could be a whole session of itself. Um, you know, when to do Teams chat versus uh, email and maybe that will be future conversation for me in fact i'm almost sure it will now that i think about the fact that i've already got a deck ready for it uh if you're in chat hit me up let me know if that's a good idea or if you're watching this later hit me up some kind of way let me know if that's a good idea and i will make that happen um but other than that you know we've we've now gone from morning to afternoon i see 1201 eastern um, if you're a West Coast, you're probably still having your coffee, which is all good. But uh, glad you could join me today. And um, I'll try to do this weekly. We also have uh, the 
what is it called? Um, Cute for Teens on Fridays, 11.30 Eastern. And I see a question real quick here in, in the government version of Teams on the desktop. We don't have the option to reply to a chat message that may be three or four threads higher. It's available on the phone. Yes, I know this was coming out, but do you know when it will be available? So I'll, I'll answer first. I'd have to check the doc, you know, to see when the actual, uh, you know, proposed data that is. I want I feel like it's soon, but you are so right. That is a cool feature and let me just show that for those that may not know what we're talking about here I'm in a commercial tenant right here which I think has it I don't know I might I might be wrong uh, go to chat here try to find some chat with some older messages maybe even this one yes do I have any with even more chat oh this is good okay so what we're talking about here oh wait i'm not even sharing hold on uh <laughs> i'm glad i caught that before i went too far looking at a commercial tenant here bob nestor myself talking about some things right so uh to be able to go back you know as this chat goes let's say i wanted to reply to something um so Bob said, how you doing way back here, right? And then the conversation proceeded to talk about Project X. If I wanted to reply to Bob to say how I'm doing, like doing fine, if I type that here now, it doesn't make a lot of sense, right? Because Bob said, let's talk about Project X, and then my next statement is doing fine. So it doesn't make sense, but I can go up here to how you doing and hit the three dots and reply to that message and now and hopefully you can see that pretty good and make it a little bigger here um, maybe uh, now it's clear that I'm replying to Bob's how you doing even though the conversation is kind of evolving into talking about Project X that's super useful uh, I used to fake it by uh, copying and pasting Bob's how you doing into, into a new message putting quotes around it and then replying that's a lot of work so this is much better and as the uh person in chat just t said that that's been available in the uh, mobile app thankfully but we've been missing it in the desktop so i'm with you i um i i certainly have it now you know on the commercial side uh, and love that it's there so hang in there for those uh, waiting for it, for it to hit the government client, I, I do think it's soon. But yes, that's a that's an awesome feature, especially for and this is probably a whole another topic I could talk about too, especially for folks who spend most of their time in the private chat area with their team doing group chats. One could argue that team could be in their team's channel, having those chat conversations. For which then there isn't. I don't think there's the concept of the reply. Uh, here, let me confirm that. Do I have any? Uh, I mean, obviously, reply at the end of a of a chat. But I wonder if I've got any chat where I can. I'm pretty sure. Oh, here we go. A bunch of replies here. Yeah, there's not a reply to, the, you know, in this thread to to this person's, you know, up above. Uh, why is that? I'm not not sure actually. But it is in the chat area, and there are a lot of folks who will use group chat more so than Teams channel chat. So this is going to be super useful for them. Uh, but yeah, group group or private chat versus channel chat is another topic. I need to be writing these down because that's another topic that uh, is probably worth a, a session too. So yeah, great question. Coming soon to the government cloud. Um, available today for those who are in the you know commercial world, you know, commercial cloud. It's the reply there and I would say too again if you want to be a champion using teams effectively you want to use that I mean nothing's keeping you from ignoring that and still putting fine down here and then just looking weird like why did that person say fine um, I'm here to help you keep not look weird and so now you know that's there now you can look cool by doing it the cool kids way with the reply button okay 
That's what I'm here for. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Good stuff. So, uh, yeah, I am glad you were able to join. I had fun with my coffee and with teams on a Saturday morning chatting with you. I'll try to do it again next week. Hit me up, or, or you can find me on Fridays, 11.30 a.m. Eastern. Maybe even more. Every now and then I just sit down and hit, hit a bunch of buttons and just start streaming. You know, that's just, that's just how I am. I'm a straight geek for teams. So, glad this, hope this was helpful. I will see you next time for Coffee with the Cowbell. Have a good one, folks.